Hello everyone. So in this video series, we're going to introduce you to the basics of web development using Java Spring as a framework. We're going to be using a tool called Boot, uh, Spring Boot Initializer, and we're going to be templating using this tool called Timeleaf. And this is really just meant to get you started on web development and is not really meant to be a deep dive on the subject. I'm going to leave out a lot of the details. Uh, so it, so use this as kind of a startup guide, a quick start guide into a course like a software development course. So the first thing we're going to do here is start with a new project, talk about how we start a new project. We're going to talk a little bit about what HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is uh, with respect to web development. We're going to talk a little bit about templating, how that plays a role into our uh, application. We're going to talk about Git tools and putting our application into production. And we're going to talk about uh, adding a database, uh, persistent data. And then finally, we're going to talk a little bit about testing. So let's dive right into this. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to navigate over to code.visualstudio.com slash docs slash java slash java dash spring dash boot. And we're going to install a couple of things. So the first thing you'll need, if you scroll down a little bit on this tutorial, uh, you'll find that there is a JDK that we're going to have to install. So I recommend, since we're using uh, Visual Studio for this demo, that you uh, download and install the Microsoft build of the Open JDK. And so you can install it there from the first link. Uh, there's also an ex extension pack for Java. So if we open up Visual Studio, uh, go to the extensions, or if you can do uh, Shift, uh, Apple key and X, or in Windows, it's the uh, Shift. Uh, control X. Uh, we can look up some of these extensions. So the first one we're going to look through, uh, look for is this extension pack for Java. So um, mm -hmm. we're just going to look through Java. Uh, the first one on the list should be the one that is um, from Microsoft. So I want you to install that. I've already done that here. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, look for the Spring Boot extension pack. So I'm going to look for Spring Boot extension pack. And uh, that again should be the first one on the list. So I'm going to install that as well. And then the third one, uh, that we're going to need is uh, a spring initializer. So again, we're going to go through and uh, look for initializer. And again, it should be the first one that's on the list here. So those things that we've uh, installed is going to help us uh, with setting up a new project. So when we create a new project, we're going to go into the command template. So we're going to do a shift command P on Mac, or if you're on Windows, we're going to do a shift, uh, shift control P, and this should bring up a uh, this uh, window where uh, we can search our dependencies. So I'm going to go through uh, and find Spring Initializer, create a Maven project. So I'm going to click on that and it's going to ask you a few questions. So once we've installed all of the, uh, sorry, all of the, the things up here, we should have a development kit. Uh, and we're going to use 3.0.6. That's the one that I've installed. The one that you're using may be slightly different. Uh, I'm going to be using Java and then it will ask you for the group ID. So I'm going to keep it as uh, com.example. You should probably create something a little bit more uh, self-explanatory, like for example, comp whatever 276 or whatever course you're taking uh, or uh, whatever your project is called. So here, I'm just going to leave it as uh, example. I'm going to leave it as demo, but the artifact ID should probably be what your project is called. So I'm going to be using a jar as a packaging type, and I'm going to be using Java version 17. So this is dependent on, again, the version that you have installed. Uh, now, if you've created several projects before, uh, you should see something like last used. Uh, I'm just going to go through all the dependencies that we're going to need for our project, and uh, we're going to set them up one by one. So if this is the first time you're, you're starting this, you will not see the last used. Uh, I'm going to start by uh, searching through some dependencies that we're going to need for our project. So some of these uh, I will not explain in too much detail, uh, but we will need it for our project. The first one is we're going to uh, find the Spring Boot Actuator. Okay, so we're going to add that as a dependency. We're also going to uh, search for Spring Web. So Spring Web is right here. We're going to add that as a dependency. So Spring Web, uh, as the name suggests, is all of the, the web dependencies that we're going to need to create a web application. Uh, a little bit later on, we're going to also need uh, sessions. So I'm going to add the Spring Session Web. Uh, I believe this is the one. Uh, and and we're going to add also uh, the, ja uh, the data. So I'm going to look for data. And uh, there should be something here called data JPA. So Spring Data JPA for SQL. So that is a, a dependency that we're going to need for our database. Another thing that we're going to need for our database is our JDBC API. 
So I'm going to look for that as well. We're going to be connecting an SQL database to our project a little bit later on. So that's what that's for. The actual database that we'll be using is called H2. So I'm going to look for H2 and again, H2 databases. I'm going to add that as well. You see that as we add our dependencies, they will appear here on the list. Um, and then finally, I'm going to uh, add two more things. Uh, one, which is called Timeleaf. As I said, Timeleaf is a templating engine. I'll talk about what that is in, in uh, our later tutorials, but we're going to need Timeleaf and we're also going to need uh, some dev tools. So this dev tools, the last one here, is not very important, uh, although it does make our life a lot easier when we're developing in Java. So altogether, we should have eight dependencies. Now, if you miss any of these or later on, you feel that for your particular project, you want to uh, add some more dependencies. I'll show you how to do that in one second. So those eight, uh, and then it'll ask, where do you want your application? So for now, I'm just going to go into here and uh, I'm going to generate directly into the Bobby C folder. And so it's going to create a application where I want it and I'm going to open that up and here is our application. All right. So we're going to wait uh, a little bit for it to uh, just update. Uh, but right now uh, you're going to see like in a, a little bit that it's going to uh, have all of our files that we need for us to be able to work with our uh, web application. Now, at this point, we have a runnable web application. And in a second, I'm going to run it and show you what it looks like. Uh, but for now, let's just take a look and, and uh, take a look at some of the things that we've uh, already created on our web application. First thing we'll do is we'll uh, go into our pom.xml and we'll take a look at the dependencies that we've added. So if we scroll down a little bit, we'll see that we have uh, the actuator, uh, we have the, the starter data JPA, we have the uh, JDBC, we have Timeleaf, we have all of these things that we're going to need uh, in order to run our application, including our database that we're going to uh, that we're going to use later on. So as I said, if you if you leave out any of these uh, or uh, any of these dependencies, you can always go back and add more by uh, going into the pom.xml and doing add starters. And again, you'll see this that de these dependencies pop up, and we can uh, again add some dependencies as we go. Okay, all right. So the next thing that we want us uh, that, that I want us to see is to go into the source folder and you'll see that there is a main folder and under there there are Java there is a Java. All right so um, you'll see that there are other folders as well. there's also resources which I'm going to talk about in one second. Uh, but under Java you'll see that there is your uh, your your URL as well as your artifact ID. So as I said, I left it as demo and then example com. And uh, here, if we take a look at our application, the application is actually quite simple. Uh, all we have here is the application, the Spring Boot application with our annotation. This tells uh, Java that this is a Spring Boot application that we're about to write. And in our in our main program, we're simply going to call the Spring application dot run and then the uh, demo application dot class so demo application is the the application that we are currently creating so this file for the most part i'm going to leave it as is i'm not going to add anything else to it uh, but later on we are going to uh, add a, uh, of course some functionality to this application uh, in the form of some controllers as well as some models so i, I will get to that uh, in a later demo but for now we have, we're going to be able to run our application. And when we run our application, you'll see that there is a static location. There's a default location that the application will look for web pages to be shown. So there's two ways to show a web page on the, uh, of our application. One is a static resource and the other is through a template. And you've heard me mention this word template already several times in this tutorial. Templates are something that we're going to talk about a little bit later on. So after we talk about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, we're going to come back and talk about what templates are. Uh, but for now, notice that there is a folder here, and currently it's empty. Uh, same with the static folder. Uh, but in this tutorial, what I want to do is concentrate on the static uh, folder. All right. So later on, when we run this application, whenever there is a request over to our web application, and a request is really what a client is sending to a server. So the way that the web application is going to run is that we have a client sending a request over to a server. The server is going to do whatever it needs in order to satisfy this request. Okay, so this could be done through static means, meaning just grab a file and send it back to the client, 
or it might need to do some processing before it sends a request back to the client. Either way, the client is just sending requests and the server is just sending responses, right? So this is the communication that happens on the web. So back to this folder, what is the static folder representing? Well, all of those rep uh, uh, resources that we're sending back as static, we're going to put it here. So anything that is just straight up HTML, straight up CSS and JavaScript, we're going to put in this static folder. Now, hopefully by the end of the next tutorial, you're going to understand what the differences are between HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But for now, just think of them as just static resources. They're just text files that I'm going to send back to the client. All right, so let's just create one really quickly here. So I'm going to create a file called hello.html. Right, so in here, under the static folder, I've created a file called hello.html. And hello.html is in the form of an HTML file. And an HTML file works like this. It is a collection of containers. So the, the highest container is what we call an HTML container. So once I start typing HTML, you'll see that uh, um, VS Code is going to give me some uh, choices for some templates. Okay, so I don't want this to, I, I actually don't want to use the word template, but this is just code. This is just some code that is going to be made up of HTML. So you'll notice that we have HTML. Okay, so this HTML tag, notice this, this is the beginning of the tag and this is the end of the tag. The end of the tag is, is indicated by this slash and then whatever the tag is. So that means this container holds all of our HTML stuff. Okay. In our HTML container, there's also a head and a body tag. Okay. And in there holds the head of the, uh, of the web page and the body of the web page. The head of the web page gives you meta information about what the web page is. So for example, the char set, uh, the uh, the HTTP equivalent, uh, the name, uh, uh, the title. Uh, this is also where we would add things like the, the any scripts, uh, any um, um, directed scripts that we want to write, uh, any uh, styles that we want to include, and, and everything like that. So anything in the head does not actually appear in the web page itself, does not appear in the body of the web page itself. It's just some metadata that gives us extra information about the web page. Now, nonetheless, it's very important that to have a lot of information in the head because it sometimes allows us to be able to uh, give uh, search engines more information about what our page is doing. All right, so we're going to start with the title. So I'm just going to say uh, my uh, web page, okay? And uh, this is going to appear in the, the title. And then in the body, I'm going to create some headings. So I'm just going to do it H1. H1 is a heading. So in the heading box, I'm going to say this is our uh, my web page. Okay, and then I'm going to have a paragraph underneath it that says, hello world. Okay, and this is really the first static file that we're going to create. Now, as we get going, uh, of course, we're going to do a lot more with this, and uh, we're going to see a lot more elaborate things that we can do with our web pages. But for now, I just want you to see how this communication is working. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back to our demo application, and you'll notice that when we uh, are in the demo application that there is a run icon here. Okay, so if we click on the run icon, it's going to boot up this application. So I'm just going to show you on the terminal what is happening. So if I just run this, it's going to run this application. And I, I think it goes pretty quickly here, but I'm just going to scroll up and take a look at some of this information that's uh, being shown. In fact, let me get rid of this part here. And uh, we're going to, uh, so it's, it, it goes through all of this. Uh, most of this is just code that is running in the background. Uh, but in particular, I want you to see a couple of things. Uh, so we've initialized some of those dependencies that we're talking about. We are running this local uh, server called Tomcat. Okay. So imagine that uh, in a real web application, what we're doing is we have a client sending information over the internet to a server. Right, so this is the server that we're actually running. So Tomcat is acting as a fake server. It is running locally on our computer, but it's going to run exactly the same as if it was running on a production server. Okay, so it's going to act like it's a production server, but the server that is running is called localhost. So in a second, when we uh, type up, when we want to interact with this server, we're not going to type in the URL. We're going to type in localhost. Okay, so it's going to act as a localhost. All right, scrolling down a little bit, uh, you'll see that it's actually initialized uh, some of the, the data. So by default, uh, we've, we're initializing a JDBC uh, memory uh, database, and we're not going to talk about that until later on, but notice that it, it has done that successfully. And then uh, it starts up the application, and then the thing that I'm looking for is somewhere down here, hopefully. Uh, 
let's see if I scroll down a little bit. Okay, so here is uh, where we have the, the templates. So you, you remember I said in the templates folder, that's where the, the engine is going to look for our templates. A little bit more on that a little bit later on. Uh, it's added an endpoint called actuator. And I'll talk about, now I'll take a look at that in one second. Okay, and if we scroll down a little bit more, I think I missed it somewhere here. Um, I'm looking for a, uh, actually looking for, where are we here? Um, there we go. So I'm looking for this thing right here, where it tells me that this is the, uh, the, the port that it's listening for. So a port is the way that we're going to interact with the database. Okay, so we're going to use localhost, but we're also going to use the port 8080 in order to interact with this uh, web page. All right, or this server. Uh, so we're going to go back and we're going to type in this time localhost and then colon 8080. So this is going to act in place of the URL. Okay, so right now we don't have it on the internet. We don't have our uh, web server on the internet running, uh, but instead we have one that's running locally. So we're going to use localhost uh, 8080, and then we're going to do slash. Now, if we do that, we'll find that we get a white label error page, which is good because this is actually telling us that the server is running and it's giving us an error because we don't actually, we, we haven't actually defined anything at slash, which is the root of our application. So we're going to do that in one second or in a later tutorial. Uh, but for now, we're going to type in a couple of things. The first one we're going to type in is the actuator. Now, I showed you earlier that actuator was actually one of the uh, endpoints that it created. So you see one of the endpoints that I created was called actuator. So that means we can type in actuator and we should be able to get some response from the server. So you see, this is uh, the response that we get, and you can probably start to see what the actuator is for. It's there just to report the the, the state of the application, uh, the state of our server. So right now um, it's telling us that we have some uh, we have some endpoints that will give us the health of the application. And uh, that's pretty much about it. So uh, I use this mostly, I use the actuator mostly to test whether our application is actually working and is actually sending back valid results. However, the thing I really wanted to check is this hello. So remember earlier in our static website, uh, in our static folder, we put hello.html. So what I want to do is come here and type in hello.html. Now remember, everything in the static folder is what the server is going to look for first. Okay, so this is the first place that the server is going to look for a uh, file to satisfy the response. So if I do hello.html, it should give me that HTML page that I, that I wrote, right? The one that says my web page and then hello world that, and then our title is my web page. Okay. So this is uh, giving you a little bit of an idea of uh, the static folder. And if you wanted to write static uh, files, if the only thing that you're writing in static files, then I've basically given you everything that you need in order to run this application. Okay, but what, what I want to do in the next tutorial is I want to start talking about HTML and CSS and JavaScript and how those things play a role in uh, web development. And uh, by the way, all three of those topics are still talking about the static folder. So we will actually not leave the static folder for a couple of uh, tutorials here. Okay, so I will stop the video here and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.